Today we've got something new on our table. We've never used this before in our soap, but I'm super excited to try it. This is a lovely snake shed. It is not snake skin. There is no fat or tissue involved in this. This is just the outermost layer that a snake will shed once it gets too big and it needs to grow. This is made up mostly of keratin, which is fabulous. Our fingernails and our hair is made of keratin. Our skin loves keratin. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut up this snake shed and put it into our lye mixture. And the lye is going to dissolve a lot of that keratin so that we can put it into our soap. Now this snake shed was found by my son. He found it while out on a hike one day, so it was humanely acquired and we're going to put it to good use. We've washed it, we've let it dry. It is now nice and crispy so we can snip it right up. And here is some snake shed ASMR. Now we've got our snake shed all snipped up, it's time to make our lye mixture. I am mixing my lye into the aloe juice, citric acid, and salt. That large snake shed, you can see after snipping it up, it doesn't take up much room. It's, it's, the snake shed is less than paper thin. So we're going to stir up our lye mixture, get it to its hottest temperature possible, and then we will add in the snake shed clippings and the heat and the chemical exothermic reaction going on in there is going to basically melt the snake shed. So we're going to stir it all up. You'll start to see it kind of wither and shrink. And that's not because it's getting wet because snake shed doesn't shrink when it's wet. It's because it's basically melting. We're going to stir it around, make sure that it's fully incorporated. And then what I am going to do is I will put a lid on this and I'm going to let it sit overnight. And that's just to make sure that that lye has plenty of time to dissolve as much as possible from that snake shed so that we can use that in our soap. Now, a lot of people are asking why, why are you using snake shed in soap? Well, it's not only for the keratin, because we're not, there's no way to test really, at least not for me, because I don't have a lab, to test how much keratin is actually still there when we add it to the soap. But what it does do that we can verify is that it lends a silkiness to the lather. Now, a lot of people will use Tussa silk in their soap in the same way. They'll clip Tussa silk into their lye solution, and the lye solution will melt it, and it adds a creamy silkiness to the lather. And snake shed is going to do very much the same thing. Now the next morning I take the lid off and I'm adding it to my oils. And let me just warn you, snake shed lye solution has a bit of a funky odor. But that's okay, that's actually quite normal too. Um, when you make goat's milk soap, it has an ammonia smell until the soap cures. Many additives will add a kind of a scent to it, but it won't actually be in the finished soap. Once it completes saponification, a lot of those smells are completely gone and you just smell the lovely fragrance that you have. So I put this through an extremely fine mesh strainer. If you don't have a very, very micro fine mesh strainer, I would suggest that you pour this through several layers of cheesecloth so that you don't get these extra little bits that didn't melt into your soap. But you'll see as I'm stirring these bits to get all of the liquid out, you can watch, see the bits almost liquefy themselves. So just that extra agitation continues the melting process and they liquefy. Once we get all of that in there, I'm gonna scrape off the bottom of the mesh strainer and that's just because some of that thicker liquefaction is stuck to the bottom and we want every last little drop of this special goodness in our soap. Because who knows when we're gonna stumble upon a snake shed again. And then after all that weirdness, it's soaping as usual. We're going to mix up our lye solution into our oils. We're going to blend it, get it to a light emulsification before we separate for our colors because we are doing a rather tricky soap technique that this is my first time doing, which is layers and dividers. So we've got our four colors set up. I just want to tell you, I spent so much time mixing micas to get colors to perfectly match the Hogwarts colors. This is the Ravenclaw blue. Next will be the Hufflepuff yellow. But even with all of my planning, I did math calculations. I did color planning. I did research on snake shed. Even with all of the meticulous planning I did, 
nothing can prepare you for the things that go wrong when soaping. And I'm just going to warn you, right here is where all of my awesomeness starts to just crumble and I start to al almost give up hope on this beautiful soap right here. <gasps> oh, you got to be kidding me. Oh, no. Yep. <laughs> I don't know why, but for some reason I poured some blue mica into my yellow batter. So you'll see up in the top left corner, that was supposed to be my Hufflepuff yellow. Now that is fully mixed with fragrance and colorant, and so it's up there hardening, which really scares me. So I'm going to try to rush, get this yellow up to the right consistency for a divided soap. I'm really worried about this, guys. At this point, I just don't know if I should even keep going. But, you know, with soaping, you got to keep going. So I have a coroplast or corrugated plastic divider that's firmly positioned in my um, silicone mold there. The blue is at the perfect consistency for this. It's pourable, but it is also thick enough that it's not going to leak underneath or the sides of my divider, and it's going to create a beautifully crisp line. The problem is going to be that the yellow is a little thinner, but that's okay. Because my blue is so thick, it's going to set up a barrier by pouring it first. Sometimes people add it at a very thin trace, and that's when you get the problems of it leaking under the mold. So you really want a thick but pourable batter for a divided soap. Once I get my blue as even as I can get it and make sure that my divider is completely straight in the mold... I am then going to get the yellow and pour it in. You can see it's a little thinner, but it's not bad. The big worry is that green up in the top corner there. I just, the whole time I'm pouring this, I know that that green is starting to saponify and will not be very pourable. Once I get this all in, I don't show this on camera, but once I get all the blue and yellow in, I carefully pull out the divider and then I'm going to bang the mold on the ground to get all the air bubbles out and to get those two colors to fully join together. Then I will carefully wipe off my divider, put it back in, but only touching the very top of that bottom layer. And that's when I will add my green and my red. Oh, my green and my red. Here, let me show you what the green looks like. It is not pretty. This green is lumpy, clumpy, it's riced, it's already thick. And so now I have to stick blend it to get the lumps out, which makes it even thicker. So I don't have this on camera because at this point I thought this soap was a lost cause. I thought this video would never see the light of day. I shoveled that green in. You can see the shadow line on the mold, on the divider. It's all lumpy and bumpy. The red is very thin. So I'm like, I don't know how the red and the green are going to interact with each other. Well, here it is. Oh, and I broke a wing already. Well, just like the Harry Potter stories, which are full of nothing but troubles, disaster, awful things happening. That's what this soap has been. <laughs> so many things bad happened. But like the Harry Potter stories, in the end, it all kind of works out, right? So cross our fingers that when we slice this, it all worked out. Okay, I learned a lot from making this batch. Um, for one, I would not make it so colorful on the top. It's harder to see the embeds, but that's okay. Let's cut into it and see what we've got. I think I have lined this up so that hopefully it won't knock off any other snitch wings. <clears throat> and we'll just apply gentle, even pressure the whole way down. Hope that we don't snap any wires. Whew. All right. All the wings, except the one I knocked off, are intact. Ooh, check it out. We've got the Harry Potter house colors. Now I'm gonna finish cutting these. We've got a couple air bubbles, but the green, that was a nightmare. Uh, I accidentally put, it was this was supposed to be the yellow, but while mixing up the blue and the yellow, I accidentally put some blue into the yellow, so that turned it green, so that went up here. So it was really thick by the time we got to the top layer. But, whoops, not like a ton of air bubbles. 
Nice. Oh, smells amazing. Smells like incense, which to me is very Harry Potter-ish. And we're not done yet. We still have one more detail to add to this soap. So we have our beautiful bars. You'll notice only two of them have the snakes on the top. That was a special request for the custom order that these are going to. We haven't beveled the edges yet. We haven't stamped them. They need to dry a little more before we do that. But before it dries, we need to apply our beautiful wax seal that is the Hogwarts School Crest. So what we're going to do is we are going to scratch up the surface, much like you learned how to do in your clay, your ceramics class in school. We will scratch up the bottom of the seal. This gives it something to grip onto. Then we're taking some soap paste. This is just soap dough that was mixed with extra distilled water. And we don't want too much, we just want enough to squish in between the cracks here and the cracks on here. And we're just going to twist that, seal it, and let it dry. And that is our magical mystical bar of Hogwarts school soap. So let's do one more here. This one does not have a snake. Tell you, these wings I've already popped two off. So the next version I do of this will not have wings sticking up. But we're just gonna scratch this up. Apply some paste. Scratch up the back of our wax seal. And squish, twist. And some of the paste, if you get too much, will squirt out the ends. I'm okay with that. We can clean that up real quick with a little wipe of our stick. And there we go, beautiful.